that in a few summers. Okay? <laughs> uh, bear with me. All right, that, that will happen. Tommy Heinsohn, Togo Falazi, guys like that. Those beat up old guys in their 80s. You know? Anyway, uh, there were a lot of people in the audience who had been around the cross for some time. And of course, uh, they remembered that I was uh, working at Harvard and they had some comments to make in the stands. Okay? So it was great pleasure. Great pleasure. I was able to watch you guys take your business and also just to uh, look around every once in a game and rub the hands, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, sort of, and sort of enjoy the silence, you know. <laughs> and let me congratulate you guys on a heck of a, heck of a year. Clearly, uh, clearly something special uh, is happening here. I, uh, and, and of course, you know, I'm a front runner like so many others. Uh, I like the way it's happening. I'll start showing up a lot more. You know? <laughs> and, and people say, what's Paul Sanchez? Didn't you used to coach there? No question about it. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm, ready. I'm ready to take it all on. No about winning basketball, uh, you start thinking about how, how it happened. Uh, the guys start to play. They start to talk a lot among each other. And they get to know each other very well. And they begin to know who, got, who they can lean on, who will do certain things on, on the court. And that's important. But you know, as good as the season can go, there are times when you, you might just lose. Okay? And the name of the game is never, never be so disappointed in the loss that you don't learn anything from it. Okay? Because you know, it's going to happen on occasion throughout life and a lot of other situations. Make sure you take the important lessons from, from those times. Uh, you know, you, you begin to say, wow, if I had gotten on the ground for, for that loose ball, it might have made a difference. If I had only had my hands up, I could have perhaps stopped uh, that pass from getting to where it got to. Um, I missed three or four free throws uh, tonight. Jeez, that would have made the game a lot closer. It might have changed what we did out there. So out of that, you start to think about woulda, coulda, shouldas. But then the name of the game is to make sure that those woulda, coulda, shouldas uh, just does not occur, uh, occur again. You know, Harvard basketball certainly has taken a huge, huge step forward. Best team in history. You know, uh, some of the other guys will say, you know, best team in history, that's a heck of a title. But they kept it happened to be true. Okay? And it's, it's, it's a proud thing to see. That's why. Next year is going to be interesting because it's going to be even better. Do I get a nod? <laughs> uh, okay. Now I can understand the seniors are cool. You know, they, I think it has to graduate and they're saying, we want a nod, but uh, we'll have to be nodding someplace else because it's not going to happen here for us. But that's okay. You, you did what you did. Uh, we, we, uh, we had a, uh, one of the hands I've had for years are, is talking to people not only in basketball, but people are out of basketball, where everybody wants to be part of a team. Yeah, I say, yeah, are you a good team player? No question about it. And everyone will say that. But the deal is, who's working as hard as they can so that when they join the team, they can make it better? Everybody wants to be there, but are you the best that you can possibly be to make the team better? And that's a big issue. Make sure you guys take care of that kind of business, so you are the best that you can possibly be and make those kinds of necessary contributions. You know, I want to talk about one thing. A problem situation came up. I had an opportunity to talk to a player. And in coaching, many times you cross into a lot of venues. I had a player who had some problems, and his problem was he thought the 100% that everyone was calling for he thought it was too much. It was killing him. <laughs> the issue, he said, is, you know, I get out there and everybody wants 100%. You know, my girlfriend wants more time. Uh, my instructors and professors, they want more time. Okay? They want me to do more. The, my, my family and friends, they want me to spend more time with them. They think that I'm going to school here and I think I'm too good for them. Okay? Uh, all kinds of, of problems that he was complaining about because of everyone wanting a piece of him. It was interesting because I, I said to him uh, when we sat down, I said, look, let's, let's talk about all of these things. First thing you have to do is put everything down on, you know, on paper and the 
again to think in terms of prioritization and compartmentalization. Okay? And then, okay, after you decide what's most important to you, and you say, well, well how do I do that? I said, well, you know, think about it just for a second, give me an example. He said, well, you know, I was thinking about giving up basketball and giving up my girlfriend. I said, well, you're right on target regarding the girlfriend. <laughs> you gotta stay, you gotta stay with the game. You know, there's no question in my mind that he made a mistake. He mentioned he cut that basketball. But, the, but I really wanted him to, to to think about it, and and he and he did, and he, and he, and I want him to understand that the thing you do when people make demands on is recognize how important your time is. All people are really saying is that they want all of your focus when you're with them when you're around. But, and when you're on the court as a coach, all I want is 100% of your time. And you're here. I mean, there's so much more to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, in here, and certainly particularly you players. So much more to you. Uh, you'll never be just this and just that. And of course, you're at the beginning. You won't recognize yourself in about maybe 20, 30 years. You're going to touch a lot of bases. But make sure that your focus is always there. Whatever you do with your time, make sure that you look at it and recognize how valuable your time is. You don't have to wait until you are in my age category. Um, oh, I lie so much about my age. Sometimes you get away. <laughs> <laughs> at, uh, at, um, 60, uh, <laughs> All right, at 71, as someone just threw out some number, um, <laughs> I recognize that there are probably uh, maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years left. And so now you begin to value your time. When someone asks you to do something, you start saying, wow, you know, two or three hours to do that. Let's see now. It knocks it down to about 5,000. <laughs> 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 you know, guys talk about let's go play golf. I said, golf. I said, that's 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 gonna be an eight nine hours. I said, Gee, that's that's a lot of time. <laughs> you truly, you truly begin to value your time. Now, using using my kind of uh, table, let's say fourteen hours a day. Uh, you're awake, getting out there. Um, let's say you've got I don't know forty fifty years. You guys should have fifty maybe sixty years left. So if you do the multiplication and a few other things. You guys are looking at two, two and a half million hours, okay? Right now, you start saying, yeah, I'm worrying about time because it's not that important. But when you get down to 5,000 hours, it gets to be that important. But the point I'm really trying to make is your time is valuable, and whatever you decide to, wherever you decide to spend your time, whatever you decide to do, make sure you put the 100% in. But that focus there, and do the best that you can, because that time is awfully important.